have a solution. Muchas gracias. Uh, let's start. So my name is Massimo Candela. I work at Entity uh, in the global IP network. We are a tier one provider, and we also are not immune from geolocation problems. And um, so in the past, I did uh, other presentations about this topic, uh, but today this is a novelty because it's a status update. I think it's uh, quite a good one and uh, we probably have an answer to the question in the, on the screen. Do we have a solution? Probably the answer is yes. Um, so um, I started, um, th this entire uh, conversation started um, a bit more than one year and a half ago. Uh, where uh, to, when together with some um, smart folks in our community, we decided to uh, write this RFC uh, 1992 to tackle geolocation problems. But it's not important uh, uh, now that, that what, what I would like to say here is that I think whatever technical solution uh, you create, it's good as much as the adoption and, uh, and the effectiveness that uh, after has for, uh, for the people that they use it. Uh, and this is what we will talk today in this presentation. So, but let's start from the beginning. So IP geolocation is essentially, from an IP address, I want to know the country or the city where this IP is connected. Uh, and why I want to do that? Well, it's to respect country regulation, uh, to provide localized content, for example, streaming in a specific language or of specific movies in specific countries to optimize latencies like CDNs or to do troubleshooting, to do research, a lot of reasons. It's quite common that you need IP geolocation. But why there is a problem with it? So um, the main problem is that uh, uh, there is the, the entire geolocation started as a um, uncontrolled, un unorganized uh, uh, solution. So, Basically, there is no central repo. The re regional internet registries, they, don't, they are not and they don't want to be geolocation providers. And, uh, and that's good. But um, then there are other third parties that they provide uh, geolocation data sets. And they are doing a great job, but they are various. And uh, also, there are CDNs and content providers, which they uh, take the geolocation provider data, but sometimes uh, they want to patch it faster than what the geolocation provider does, and they apply local patches, local forks. So in the end, the problem is that now you have geolocation data uh, spread in various data sets, and if something is wrong, how you fix it? So there is also no common strategy exactly. So how you fix it? So you go online, you read tutorials, and they are like, oh, you can uh, try this, try this other thing. And, but in the end, uh, you have to send email and stuff like this. So there is no formula. And um, it's all based on guesswork, on WIS data, reverse DNS, latencies. And, uh, and also the uh, geographic uh, uh, hints that they are available in the WHOIS database, they are a mess. I'm not going to talk about this uh, now, but you can read, I will give you a link, or uh, you can come on the, there is a tutorial on, on Friday where we will go into more details on how to fix these problems. And last but not least, um, essentially these are your resources, but you are not the one deciding the geolocation of it. You don't have a way to actually try to fix it. Uh, so, in general, you contact various uh, geolocation providers by email. So, only in Nanog, I, I did this uh, check one month ago, there were 241 emails about geolocation problems since 2019, and I saw uh, some new coming in the past weeks. So, it, it does happen quite often. So in the end, what do we want? We want a way to control IP geolocation ourselves. So these are my IP, my prefixes. I want to provide this information. And uh, I want to be flexible. So I don't want to like uh, geolocate in, uh, like for example, uh, other attributes in which like entire INNAM or I want just to geolocate specific prefixes speci or IPs or I want to geolocate, for example, I don't know, this slash 12 in Italy and this slash 24 inside the slash 12 in Rome, more specifically. So I want to have this flexibility, geolocate a country level, a city level, whatever I want. 
and I want also to be easy to maintain. So something like a file. You edit a file, I keep my file up to date, and that's all. Also, I don't want to go on the RIR portal. I don't want to go in the WIS every time, because in the medium, uh, big organizations, there are no, uh, not everybody has access to it. So it would be nice to have a file where I can work on it, and then this file is automatically uh, distributed. Uh, it's for sure no emails. Um, so the solution um, is this RFC 1992. Uh, basically, well, what we want to do, what we did with this is to give power to the operator to express their geolocation of their resources. What they do is that they uh, link a geofeed file, which is a format that we will see in a bit, in WIS. Once it's linked, you link it once. If you don't have access, you ask somebody to link it. Once it's linked, you just manage the file and you keep managing the file. Not only this allows to these files to be indexed and so the geolocation provider can automatically fetch them without the emails and stuff, um, but also we provide them a way to safely validate the ownership, which was something that sometimes was not done or done in not proper ways, like, oh, I checked the domain of the email that I received the information or stuff like this. So it is both a, a, like a functionality and flexibility and security at the same time. So how does it work? Really simple. You create a CSV file, which is a text file, uh, in this format, which is like a prefix, comma, a country code, ISO country code, comma, a region, still ISO country code, comma, a city name, okay? And uh, then uh, you publish this file somewhere uh, on uh, possibly over HTTPS. And then you go look for uh, uh, the remark that is uh, uh, encompassing uh, your prefixes that you are trying to geolocate in that file. So an INNUM that uh, contains those prefixes that you are geolocating in the file. And then uh, uh, you go, you find this INN mark and you add the remark. The remark is in this format, like geofeed space name or uh, file uh, URL, okay? Um, so this is an example of the, of the uh, um, geofeed file. You see, you can put m many uh, prefixes in the same file. You can provide whatever uh, level of uh, flexibility, uh, accuracy you want. And uh, this is an example of how you can add it to uh, Milaknik. And uh, you find the INNM, uh, then you click on remark, and then you add this uh, string uh, that points to your file. And this is what you would see uh, if you would do who is of your uh, of one of your IPs. Then you will have uh, uh, this uh, this thing here, which is the URL of the file pointing to uh, 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 from the the remark. And as you see that, also geolocation provider will be able to see that. Uh, now, don't forget that you have to link from the INNM uh, because that's how where the validation comes into place. Uh, basically, whoever goes and looks into the file has to read only uh, the prefixes they are coming from, I mean, that they are contained from the INNM where you are coming from. This says if you were able to write the INNM, then you own that resource and we can read those prefixes. So don't forget that. Or you can use a tool. Uh, and this is uh, uh, super new. This is really better. And uh, bear with me if you will find uh, any issue while trying to use it. Uh, was deployed in the past hours, and uh, this is the reason why there is a balloon here for uh, every time I present something new. Um, you can go on this uh, uh, packetvis.com slash geofeed. This is uh, uh, not an entity service. Uh, it's uh, something I'm running, and you can... Uh, Basically, it simplifies the entire process. Uh, you can click on the icon geofeed at the top, you insert your prefix, uh, it guides uh, uh, you through the, you can set the geolocation that you want and it makes sure that whatever you write makes sense. It validates your ISO codes, it validates that the city is inside the region, is inside the, uh, the country and stuff like this. So, because at the moment there are around at least 5% of geofeeds that are malformed. So this will uh, avoid you to write uh, codes or uh, stuff that they don't exist. And we'll show you also on a map uh, the geolocation. 
Then after you write where you want that IP to be geolocated, then you can you go to the next step, and here it tells you which remark you have to edit. You go to edit that remark, and it tells you exactly what link you want to you can add to there. So automatically, this tool hosts and generates the file. So it generates the file and hosts it for you. But if you want to host it yourself, you just switch this uh, this switch at the bottom, and you just put your own uh, URL. Then you do save and test. And if you have this green uh, at the bottom, it says your GFID deployment is good to go. And uh, then you're done. Otherwise, it will tell you exactly what it is missing. Is the file is malformed? Uh, the URL is wrong. We cannot fetch the file. Whatever is the reason, you will, uh, you will If everything is green, you are done. The geolocation, there is nothing else to do. The geolocation provider, most of them, they will uh, fetch it, and your geolocation uh, will be at some point fixed. Uh, the next step, which is optional if you want to do, um, uh, you can go and check what is the current status of your geolocation across all the geolocation providers. And uh, it tells also which one are going to fetch it automatically and which one instead are going to, uh, uh, they need an email and uh, weekly we send these batch emails uh, and uh, if needed. Uh, but it's also good just to check what is the current uh, uh, status of the uh, of the resource across all the, when it will be fixed, uh, they will the, the marks they will become all green, and uh, and you are you are going to be happy and finished. Um, so now let's uh, go to the adoption part. So who is actually this is all nice, but who is actually uh, reading these geofits? Uh, which geolocation providers uh, uh, can read these geofits? Well, there is another website. <laughs> That is geolocatematch.com, which is a website that I created to um, provide, provide awareness about this, uh, this RFC and also provide numbers about it. And uh, this uh, screenshot was done a bit more than a month ago, and we had uh, already 63,000, more than 63,000 prefixes. Um, but now we are, uh, uh, I checked this morning, we are basically 100,000. It's something like 9998 or something like this. Uh, 100,000 uh, is a good increase in a month. Uh, but the most important part is that you can see the list of geolocation providers. And uh, there are, at the moment, if you go on the web page, there are more geolocation providers than this screenshot. And they also got much faster. So the majority of this, we basically have that uh, among the biggest one, uh, the majority they fetch uh, these files and they correct the geolocation in uh, in one day. So how do we calculate this? We hide geofeed files in WIS and we fetch them uh, and see when uh, the geolocation providers are updating this uh, data and it matches what we just wrote. So we can also calculate how much time it takes for them to... and. Um, and there is also great news. There is uh, one uh, big uh, provider that uh, is uh, absent from this list, but uh, actually a big part of this uh, work was uh, communication with the various uh, uh, geolocation providers and uh, also some content providers. Um, and uh, a big geolocation provider that is missing from this list will soon uh, uh, implemented. Uh, I got uh, the news, but I, I will leave to them to, to, to release it publicly. So, um, what else? So, there is also in the same page, uh, you can also do from here a test or whatever, you put a prefix and it just tests if there is a geofeed and if it is okay. And if everything is fine, there is a button share on Twitter. I just put it there because I, uh, my goal, as I said, is to create awareness. So if you share it, uh, you share it. Oh, my organization uh, implemented GeoFeed correctly and blah, 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 uh, will help the process of spreading uh, the news and also have uh, more people on board. Um, so, and uh, uh, what else? You can find in the same page also a more information that you can uh, read all the details of, about the things that I said before, how, to, how it works, uh, what you can do if, uh, if uh, in the end it doesn't work, and all details how the experiment is done. So the most important part anyway is the first uh, screenshot that I uh, show you. Uh, with this, we already have on board the majority of the big geolocation providers and uh, 
we will have uh, more in the in the coming uh, in the coming days. We are using it an entity uh, with a lot of satisfaction as well. Um, okay, so uh, before to close, uh, a quick recap. This is the first link is where you can set up and test your GeoFeed easily. And um, the second one, uh, Geolocate Match, is where you can read about adoption number. Uh, you can also test and read more info. And the last link is about the RFC itself if you want to see the details. Another uh, great news is uh, that uh, this RFC uh, is uh, the only geolocation method that works across all the five RIRs. Uh, and it works uh, without any issue also uh, a LACNIC and uh, so I hope you will um, enjoy this. And uh, my presentation is over with a bit of, uh, with a bit of uh, extra time uh, it appears and uh, if you have questions we can answer them. Hello, Eric Zegas from Domain Tools. Have you observed any uh, sluggishness or latency from the Whois providers? Um, for it, that is, is it scalable that more than just the geolocation providers would be using these uh, hints in the Whois info? Okay, sorry, can you repeat the, the beginning of the question? It, how scale? How scalable is it to use Whois as the oh. distribution of the service? Might it be better with DNS or some other protocol? Wiz is the uh, okay. So Wiz is the best option. This was discussed uh, in various cases during the ITF. So Wiz is the best option for various reasons. The first reason is because Wiz is the authoritative source at the moment, and every time you want to look for information like IP and prefixes, you go to Wiz and having the connection there that can also allow you to easily validate ownership is a good step. The scalability of it, it's amazing because WIS, uh, across all RIRs, uh, they provide WIS dumps, which are essentially files. And uh, you can find all the GeoFeed with a grep. And uh, so there is a tool called GeoFeed Finder, which I wrote, that can uh, basically crawl all the five RIR it's open source BSD3 license. You can go online and look at it. It, it basically takes all the five RIR, whiz dumps, automatically downloads, manages the cache, finds the GeoFeed files, validate the ownership, and gives you a single file all together in it with all the validate, validated uh, uh, feed. And in the, now the slides are not there, but in the Geolocate Match webpage, you can get the output, uh, the link at the bottom, which that is the entire geofeeds of the entire internet across all the fiber IR, already validated. Más preguntas? ¿Alguna pregunta más? Any more questions? Jorge is running. Okay. Massimo. Okay, no problem. Massimo, I have a question. What happens if somebody puts malicious information in that uh, text file? How can you control who does it? You mean malicious in the sense like that you don't own that prefix or malicious like you are placing a wrong geolocation okay okay so the first is if you can i have the slides back uh, it would be uh, there is a slide to for that if you um, put a prefix that is not your prefix in the file the rfc says that when you crawl the wiz data and you find an island num and you go in the file that is linked, you are allowed to only read prefixes that they are inside the INNM. This guarantee that if you put rubbish in the rest of the file is not going to be read. That's the first thing. There is also an additional signature that can be done with the, uh, uh, essentially with the same certificate of RPKI. 
Um, but that is uh, an extra step if you really don't trust, for example, with authentication and, and stuff like this. So the, the first question is answered. You just look, INNAM, follow the link, read only inside the, the... If you instead want to put wrong geolocation information, there is nothing that prevents you to do that. But there is nothing also at the moment. You can just write whatever. There is no real way to check it. However, the geolocation providers, they are fetching this file. They may, and some they said that they are in, in they want to, they may uh, uh, try to uh, check, uh, do some kind of uh, check on the, for example, if you say that you are in the US, but your latency is too high to be US and uh, probably it's closer to be in Asia, uh, probably maybe they can reject uh, that information, but that is up to them what they want to do when they read it. Uh, there is no physical way to prevent that. Okay, uh, many thanks. Okay, there's no. Con esto, a los que reference. So with this, geo uh, references somehow need to have the obligation of updating the information that they haven't with a certain uh, regularity. Could you speak slowly? What you just said about GeoFeed and RFC, does it somehow make geolocators, the main geolocators in general, to update the databases? Or is it simply up to uh, um, Every, whoever can read the, that the information and uh, create his own. Uh, I, I don't know if I understood correctly the question, but uh, whoever can use it and uh, and read the geofit files and create, you can download that file and, and use it. It's not only for geolocation providers to to fetch it. Is is that the question? Maybe no, but uh, va, va más bien enfocado. A no, it's rather focused to the fact whether those who administer these sites are somehow obliged to pay attention to this information and based on that to update the databases. Or it's not, there's no obligation. Are there any obligations, that is, with the information that will be provided now, do, is it binding for the managers of the geo-reference pages to update the databases or to make changes as to how they have a certain uh, IP segment geo-referenced or is not uh, mandatory to do anything? Let me see if this RFC is binding to the geolocation providers so that they may update their databases that may eventually be wrong. This new RFC and the GeoFit format create any mandate for the geolocation providers to correct their or correct or update their databases? There is no, there is no way to create any mandate to anybody. So it, it, they are interested in having this data because they want to have better data, and for them it's cheaper to just read it from you. So basically, they all already support the file format, and uh, to just fetch it automatically for them is uh, is good. They are all happy about it. Um, but there is no way to create any mandate that they need to fix it. Or even if the IAT, uh, the RFC would say they must do that, which would not make sense, there is no practical uh, enforcement of that. But they are interested in doing it. And if you saw, in general, in one day, they all fix it because they are interested in, uh, in doing it. Especially if the other competitor does it, then now you should also do it and be fast as well. So. 
Si no hay más preguntas, no tengo preguntas. If there are no more questions, there are no questions online. So thank you, Massimo. Perfecto. Sí, eh, bueno, vamos con nuestro...